Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back, everybody. Well, guys, I want to, again, just ask you, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe to both channels, EE Arts and also Evolutionary Energy Arts. Uh, that was the original channel. And make sure you have the little bell click so you get notifications. We do appreciate it, too, if you do thumbs up and help share the video so we can wake more people up because again you know change is going to come from more people awakening on the planet not just to the system and what <laughs> its true agenda is but also on how you could better yourself and get outside of the system and develop you know the ability to become the very best you i think that's the most beautiful thing that we can do is improve on ourselves and then everything else will follow yep and so we did uh, a video that I had published at midnight. Look at that, 666 views. Whoa, scary stuff. That practice of the immortals, cultivation of the life force. And if people just realize, because you know that's what helped me overcome two ruptured discs without modern medicine and also overcome Lyme's disease without modern medicine. If people just understood that we can really create our own health just through intention and some simple breathing focused energy exercises and you don't got to spend anything but just a little time mm -hmm. it does it does take time and dedication but all of that it blooms like a really beautiful flower when you spend that time on yourself it's like connecting you uh, with the planet in a very beautiful way Absolutely. And again, you know, I just wish people would spend a little bit more time on things that do require patience. But that's part of this world. And that's part of why we see this matrix in place that's always demanding our time and our energy and our focus and always getting us to expend our energies in a negative way. You know, always, you know, just got to make more money, got to pay the bills, you know, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to where if we didn't have this whole system, we would have time to go within and to cultivate things that would amaze us. And, you know, it hit me um, yesterday. I was what I was reading a article that was talking about more people that are dropping out of the entire workforce. And of course, it, that's viewed in a negative light. I view it as a positive thing in, in many ways, because again, this is how we are controlled. It's it's through the all the middlemen, all the structure, all the procedures we got to go through. The more we can get outside of the system, doing the things we want to for ourselves, the better off we're going to be, the quicker we're going to get totally out of this Kali Yuga. Yes, and it's something we can do to help each other, you know, step by step, working with each other encouraging each other and just making the world a better place the whole time we're doing it so we see more than a million people in puerto rico left without electricity after a fire at the main power plant now there's about 3.2 million people if i remember right on puerto rico so this basically a, a third of the island that had no power there biggest blackout so far this year across the U.S. territory. They, they do get quite a few blackouts uh, as well. Puerto Rico is a, a beautiful island. Interesting history, interesting mix of people there. Uh, I've been blessed to be able to spend time down there and enjoyed it very, very well. But the power is being restored little by little. You know, it wasn't a hurricane. The exact cause of the interruption, by the way, is unknown. It's going to require an exhaustive investiga uh, investigation. The equipment whose failure sparked the fire had been properly maintained. So what caused the fire? That's the big thing. Yeah, you know, what caused it? Was it mm, sleepy cellular units? Was it the magnetosphere's decline? Was it, I mean, we, we're going to take a look at um, space weather. So, you know, you'll see that it, there's nothing that stands out there that we see from what they're giving us. But obviously there's a lot of energy going on the planet and this is the fire so yeah puerto rico's power grid was devastated by a fire at one of the largest power plants on the island triggering widespread blackouts 
Interesting. We'll see. I mean, most of the time we, we never officially hear or there might be a little blurb that comes out later on that most people don't notice where they say, you know, what the cause was if they find the cause. Exxon signals record quarterly profit from oil and gas prices. So all that money you guys and us have been paying and I'm only thankful that we don't have to commute because we, we don't commute. In actuality, we, we don't leave the house for <laughs> very long periods of time, um, which is a blessing. So we only got to fill the tank up maybe once a month. But all those people that are paying so much more to just get to work and to do you know the things that they've had to do to keep their heads above water... Do you think it's it's all because of increasing costs? Well, then how do they have record profits? You got to look at these things. Record profits in this industry, record profits in the medical industry because of, you know what, the plague upon the land. We see certain companies, and again, you know, who owns these companies that are making these record profits? That's what we have to really ask. And then especially, let's let's look deep. Let's go in and look at what lawmakers are, you know, putting things into law that perhaps they are benefiting from. Mm -hmm. We need to look at that and then we need to decide, okay, at what point am I going to exit out of this system because it's so infuriating. We do have choices. They have made it very difficult for us to step out of the system. But if we, if we keep it in our minds, if we keep it in our hearts, we will manifest. ExxonMobil uh, Corporation on Monday said its first quarter results could top a seven-year quarterly record with operating profits from pumping oil and gas alone of up to $9.3 billion. That's That's quarterly. Quarterly. Yeah. A snapshot of the largest U.S. oil company's quarter ended March 31st showed operating profits from oil and gas. Its biggest unit could jump by as much as $2.7 billion over the prior quarter, $6.6 billion. So when you really look at this, look at the bigger picture. What has really happened with the whole WAR? Well, some big corporations are making even bigger money. In fact, you see big big oil CEOs are testifying before Congress amid the skyrocketing gas prices. But when you have the pre- the process and procedures that we have, which in in my humble opinion are an absolute joke, when you can, it's it's perfectly okay to lobby, and really, what really is lobbying? When people are donating money to have their opinions heard doesn't that sound like a word that begins with a b b r i b e r y isn't it isn't that what that really is and if you wanted to look uh top exxon mobile shareholders well you have andrew p swager darren w woods neil w duffin vanguard group black rock State Street Corp. Wait a minute. Vanguard Vanguard and BlackRock, aren't, aren't these the guys that just benefited like tremendously by buying up all sorts of properties because people can no longer afford them? You know, it's it's getting pretty obvious. Pretty obvious. As I've said before, if you made corporations illegal, all corporations had to be dissolved, the system would just disappear in a moment. Because then you would have the ability to trace who's really doing things. They hide behind these groups. So we see Vanguard and we see BlackRock, but we're not seeing certain names. And and we need to see the names. Corporations are, in some ways, the biggest evil on the planet. It's through this system that they can, the real controllers can hide. But again, Vanguard and BlackRock and, you know, these two groups, they've really really benefited from the plague upon the land, too. Yes, they're doing very, very well. And it doesn't bother them one bit that they're doing so well. So they're just going to keep on doing it. And unless we change our ways, it's going to keep on going. Yeah. And, you know, this whole system has to go. Right now they're deliberating on another uh, SCOTUS position. 
And, you know, it's a joke. It, it's an absolute joke because, you know, it, it's like walking into a casino. Do you, who, who does the, the card dealer work for? It's the same thing when cases go to SCOTUS. You know, who do they work for? They work for the ones that are lobbying. You know, the, the biggest lobbies with the most to offer, that's who they work for. So, you know, you, you can't fix this. It's, it's all got to go bye-bye. And when we look to some of the prophecies, like from the, the Hopis and others, we're talking about the Rainbow Warriors, and, and they talk about in the future, people are going to be chosen to be in leadership positions by how they have chosen to work for others truly, not by who has the biggest bank book, not by who has the biggest ego, not by who can, you know, slander the other person the most. It's going to be by, you know, who has shown the biggest heart, the most compassion, the most wisdom. And again, when you are electing people like, say, SCOTUS, it's kind of a lifelong position. Some of the senators out there, they're kind of like a lifelong position too. Look at MP and, and HR. They've been there forever. And same thing with Senator Graham down, down there in South Carolina. It, it's just like the Roman Senate. They're, they're kind of in there permanently. All this has to change. All this has to change. The Texas drought is the worst in years. Are we on the brink of widespread disaster? Now the drought is coming all the way to Texas, as we saw the wildfires. It's not good. It's not good. And even in eastern Texas, I remember much more rain last spring than, than this so far. Right. And a lot of things are changing. And we were listening to a, a very brilliant young man on YouTube last night, and he had some really good ideas about how to change the system. Unfortunately, he his ideas kind of revolved around using the very system that we have to try to change the system. So we can't really use the media outlets. We can't use any of these other technologies to try to change things because you know, the system has to be pulled up by the root. It's This is the root cause. But I don't want people to not share their ideas because that's how we're going to get out of this is brainstorming together. So as of March 29th, 88% of Texas is in drought conditions. That's a lot. 18.2 million Texans, the second largest state at some point in time. I think it's probably, you know, if things went as they are, probably like another 40 years, 30, 40 years, you'd have Texas surplanting California as the largest state. But yeah, things can change much quicker than that, and I do expect they will at some point in the not-too-distant future. About 42% of the state is seeing extreme or exceptional drought. As you can see, it's it's more towards the western part uh, of the state. Again, heading towards New Mexico, heading up towards Oklahoma, up, up here in, in the Texas Panhandle area. But again... You know, this is really a, a bad sign when we consider just how all the West is really so, so dry. So taking a quick look at space weather, we see the KP has hit four a couple of times. It's not not huge by any means. Um, and we'll be keep, keep watching this. It doesn't look like we're expecting anything too severe. But um, Turkey, by the way, did record its second uh, coldest march on record. And Florida, if you're in Orlando, or even if you're in Tampa, you might be seeing some chilly mornings in the 50s. It's common, actually, to see that in Jacksonville. But when you start getting below Tampa, that's when you're you're talking, you know, unusual weather. But even in Florida, sometimes you're going to get a little cold nip coming in. And we see we had a blackout period here on the Schumann. It's not exceptionally high right now, the power is uh, 60, uh, 24, I should say, as you see here in the amplitude, 63. We've seen it much, much higher. Newsom urging Californians to cut water use by 15% as well. In February, they saved less than 1%. And, um, you know, not a good sign, not a good sign at all. People are fleeing California in droves. You know, that, that number keeps increasing. And meanwhile, another number that keeps increasing is the Cubans arriving in record numbers along the Mexican border. 
Last month, more than 32,000 Cubans were taken into the U.S. custody along the Mexican border, double the number that arrived in February. So that's a big, big uptick. And also many new ones coming in are flying to Nicaragua, which dropped its visa requirements for Cubans last fall, then traveling overland either to Del Rio or Yuma. All right, well, you know, you have to, have to, have to just bring up the obvious fact. Now, the poor people of the world are the poor people of the world. And it's a sad fact that most of the world is is still living in a very, very impoverished manner. And there it, there really shouldn't be any of that. And, of course, people are always looking to, to try to find better opportunity. You know, my grandfather uh, came from Mexico, from La Piedad, Mexico. I don't know the year, but some somewhere um, close to around 1900 and settled in Sacramento, California and, and uh, had a small farm up there and says that's what he knew. He knew farming from uh, Mexico. So yeah, you know, basically my, some of my family has come over that border in that manner. Now, uh, you know, he did it legally and, and became a citizen and all. The thing that's different about this time is w- this is a Trojan horse operation, which has been in play for a very, very long time. So while many of these people are truly just average people looking to better themselves, just, you know, desperate to provide for their families, there's a small portion that you have to just look at this. Cuba, Nicaragua. Cuba and Nicaragua, they they have been working with China and Russia. And in fact, you know, there's been a lot of agreements in place recently um, by both countries. You know, Cuba has been... Uh, in that sphere of inf- influence for a long time, but now recently Nicaragua, and of course Venez- <laughs> Venezuela we could add in as well. <clears throat> as we know, all the stuff that was going on with the attempted regime change in Venezuela. So to me, I look at this and I just see this is more uh, that m- a small percentage, but still it's significant when you're talking month after month. Like if you're talking, just say... You know, 3,000 of the Cubans that came across the border just for that one month, you you times that out over a year, 36,000 people that might actually be uh, troops being put into place just from this one locale. When we look into the numbers, the millions that have crossed the border, literally just in the last couple of years, millions and millions, if, if you just even had small percentages of those that were actually being put into place for a time when, you know, it it does turn into a WW hashtag number three, then you you have so much potential chaos inside inside this country. And again, you know, somebody's left the door open. You know, and I think it's so sad because so many of you guys that we work with want to help people. That's what we hear all the time. I I want to help people. So that's definitely a very pure intention and many, many hearts are open. Um, But they've set it up in such a way to, if we, if we want to help other people, well, we have to let the wolves in too. So, you know, it's just another method in which they use and they use this system to uh, cover up their deeds. And it's unfortunate. It is, it is. But again, they, they use us to control us with other of us. It, <laughs> That's yeah, exactly, exactly what they do. So, you know, it's really sad. And you have Governor Abbott over in Texas chartering buses of undocumented mu- immigrants to D.C. The other thing that is going to become obvious and it's going to become just unmanageable is the fact that the country is going to break up. There's no way around it. It's going to break up. The guides have confirmed this. Uh, It is just completely something that's actually needed, but not in the way and the manner that is planned. It is definitely planned. Again, order out of chaos. That is the slogan that they use. So, you know, these next couple of years are going to be just something to watch because we know when... uh, parentheses, election 
rolls around again, especially in 2024. It's going to be very interesting. 2022 shall be, you know, curious as well to watch what happens. And uh, we'll touch more on that on evolutionary. But yeah, yeah, I would not be surprised in the least if Texas is the first state that declares its independence or if it's Texas and Florida um, becoming part of a, a new Southern coalition confederation. It, it could very well be. It's pretty obvious when you look at everything that's going on uh, that there is no agreement between the current structure in D.C., and what's going on uh, in the governance of those two states, as well as many others. We could we could throw South Dakota into the mix. We could throw many Southern states in the mix, and many right up through the center of the country as well. It's going to be interesting times, guys. This is all why we need to be as prepared as possible. Thank you guys for your support on Patreon and Ko-Fi. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you for supporting Medicinal Foods and the channel as well. Those are good people over there. Lots of good products help you detox, help you boost your immune system, get some of the crap out that we're constantly inhaling and ingesting. Yes, indeed. God bless and namaste. God bless. Namaste.